G'day guys, Dean from Blog for the Blood God here, and welcome to the first installment of my upcoming series on the new Chaos Space Marine Codex. I'm going to be talking Legion traits, I'm going to be talking about secondary objectives, I'm going to be talking about stratagem combos and relics and warlord traits, and I'm also going to be doing masterclasses or deep dives on each individual unit. So I probably won't get to them all, but I'm going to get to as many as I can before the World Eaters Codex drops, at which point I'll be fucking the Codex Chaos Space Marines off and focusing purely on World Eaters, getting back to my roots and getting back to what made this blog what it is today. So without further ado, let's get into the first installment, which is going to be on the Lord Discordant. I'm going to be talking about particularly how to use him defensively in this installment, and then in future installments I might talk about how to use him aggressively, because the Lord Discordant is quite a diverse unit and he can fill, fill multiple battlefield roles. So in this one, we're going to be talking about how to make him a really hard cookie to crack and how you can wield him defensively in games. Alrighty, so first, why am I doing the Lord Discordant in a defensive video? The reason for this is that a lot of armies are going to be struggling to maximize their secondaries these days. And what you can do is you can make the Lord Discordant very, very tough. And then you can also take other tough characters in your army, like Abbott on the Despoiler, and you can soup up a Chaos Lord pretty tanky. And then what you do is you use these so that you have four or five characters to bait your opponent into picking Assassinate and then you wield those characters very defensively and deny your opponent those victory points. And that way your opponent, instead of picking something that they could get a reliable 12, 13 points out of, instead you bait them into picking assassinate and then you just do not let them kill your characters. So that's the utility I think that the Lord Discordant brings to his games. However, you can wield him as an aggressive beat stick. And in those sorts of scenarios, you'd bring just him and maybe one other character you know, and that way they're not going to pick Assassinate, and that way you can sacrifice him, and he'll almost always trade up for value. So they're the two different ways that you can wield the Lord Discordant. In this video, we're going to be breaking down the specifics on how to make him as tough and as durable as possible, and ways that you can wield him in your games so that you further enhance that innate toughness and innate durability of the unit. So before we get started, let's have a quick look at his profile. So the Lord Discordant's got a 12-inch move, Weapon skill, ballistic skill 2, strength 4, toughness 6, 9 wounds, 6 attacks, leadership 9, 2 up save. Now the important things to note here are the 2 up save and the 9 wounds. So 9 wounds basically meaning that he can be protected by the lookout sir rule. So if you put him nearby strong tough units, people are going to really struggle to shoot out that Lord Discordant. And they're going to struggle to charge the Lord Discordant because he's going to be protected by another tough unit. So the idea here is that you'll be able to really protect him in that way. Uh, as for offensive stuff, he's got a Bale Flamer or a Hellstalker Auto Cannon. They're your two weapon options. Uh, I personally prefer the Bale Flamer just because you get that reliable 2d3 plus 2 hits. It's much more reliable than three shots. However, the Hellstalker Auto Cannon's probably got utility in the defensive build because you're going to be able to protect him and shoot things downrange. So really it's up to you, but I personally prefer the Bale Flamer. I think that 18 inches range is plenty when you're going to be pushing this guy into the center of the table anyway. Um, so that's my weapon of choice. He's also got a Magma Cutter, which is an assault one six inch range, essentially a melter gun, but you don't have to be within half range to get the plus two damage. Uh, and then in combat, he's got, so he's got six attacks on his profile and he has a Impaler Chain Glaive, which he makes those attacks with, which are going to be striking at strength six AP3, 2 damage, and each time an attack is made with a weapon, if you made a charge move, you get plus 1 to the wound roll. So you're going to be wounding most things on either a 2 plus if they're infantry based, or 3 plus if they're you know, medium sized things, and 4 plus for any pretty much any vehicles, any chunky vehicles. But he gets more than just those 6 attacks, he then goes in with his Mecha Tendrils, which he gets an additional four attacks. These are just strength four, no AP, a single damage. So they're pretty insignificant attacks, but they do help you dig yourself out if somebody tries to tar pit you with a big unit of gaunts or something to that effect. And then he also gets to make another four attacks with his bladed limbs, which are strength six, AP two, two damage. So all up, he gets 14 attacks. Uh, and this is another one of the reasons why I think he's better suited to a defensive role, because the thing about this, this guy is he puts out so many attacks, most of which are already of high quality, that you don't really need to buff his offensive output for him to be 
offensively like useful. Whereas if you buff his defend his offensive output, well, you, yeah, you're going to kill more things, but you're also potentially exposing yourself to losing that Lord Discordant. So I think when it comes to balancing offense and defense, since this guy's already quite high in offense, I don't necessarily think that you need to buff his offensive abilities. You're better off buffing his defense so that you know you're going to get multiple uses out of him before he's eventually taken out. That being said, I do have some combos that I want to discuss in the next video, which is going to be the offensive Disco Lord. This is the defensive one, and I'm going to talk about the various ways that that can work. Further to this, he also has the Techno Virus Injector, which basically means that anytime he targets a vehicle, he adds one to the damage characteristic of that attack. So his Chain Glaive and his Bladed Limbs are going in and doing three damage, and even his Mecha Tendrils are going in and doing two damage when targeting vehicles. Now, one of my favorite things about any unit, every single time I'm reviewing a unit, the first thing I look to is their abilities, because often abilities can have that really, really powerful thing that synergizes well with other units in the army. So let's have a look at the Lord Discordance abilities. All right, so he's got Let the Galaxy Burn and Demon Engine. Um, Demon Engine is an important one to note because that's going to pair well with some stratagems later in the video. Uh, and then he's got a Corrupt Machine Spirit. So in your command phase, this model can either corrupt an enemy vehicle or a friendly vehicle within 9 inches. If it corrupts an enemy vehicle, roll a number of D6 equal to the wounds characteristic. And for each 6, that model suffers one model wound to a maximum of 6. And if it corrupts a friendly vehicle until the start of your next command phase, each time that metal makes a melee attack, add one to the, hits the attack's hit roll. That can only be completed once per turn. Then he's got another one which is called Spirit Thief, which is that if he destroys one or more vehicles with a melee attack, until the end of the battle it can use its Corrupt Machine Spirit's ability twice in your command phase. Alright, so straight out of the gate you've got some really powerful abilities here. The first one being able to corrupt an enemy vehicle is quite powerful because if you go up to something like a, a knight with 24, 30 wounds and you just roll a bunch of dice, you roll 24 to 30 dice, and for every 6 they suffer a mortal wound up to 6, that's pretty good. That's a pretty reliable you know, 4, 5, 6 wounds, depending on the target. So that's really good. Um, however, I think the real power from here comes from the other side of that, which is corrupting a friendly vehicle and giving it plus 1 to its hit roll. That way you can go, okay, cool, I'm going to throw a Lord of Skulls in and I'm going to give it plus 1 to its hit roll. I'm going to throw a couple Mauler Fiends forward and this turn that one's going to make a charge, so I'm going to put the plus 1 to hit on that Mauler Fiend and it's going to go in and now it's hitting on 2s with D3 plus 3 damage attacks and you can really buff up friendly units. You don't have to roll for it, you don't have to mess around, that's really powerful. And further to this, after he kills a vehicle, he can do it twice. Now, this is interesting because often you're probably not going to be killing a vehicle with this guy until the second or third turn, right? You're not going to go in and kill vehicles turn one unless your opponent's foolish enough to let you get that charge. So, while it's not that easy to do, you're probably not going to get it until turn three being realistic. When you do get it, it becomes very powerful because now he can go, cool, I'm giving that one plus one to hit and that one plus one to hit. Or he can go, cool, I'm going to roll, you've got 24 wounds, I'm going to roll 24 dice, take a number of sixes, and then I'm going to also corrupt that vehicle and take, you know, six mortal wounds off of that. And then I'm going to charge one of them and kill it, and it's like, he just goes absolutely crazy with those abilities when he can do it twice. So, really powerful abilities on the Lord Discordant. But that's not what we're here to talk about. What we're here to talk about is how to make him defensive, and then how to wield him defensively. All right, now... What we're going to do for this is I'm going to talk about the standard loadout that is available to every Legion that I would recommend. And then after that, I'm going to go through some of the Legion specific things where you may want to swap these out for the standard loadout for those Legion specific loadouts. Because basically there's a standard Warlord trait and a standard Relic that if you give him, make him tough as fuck. But there are some Legion specific ones that could arguably make him even tougher. So I'm going to go through the standard ones first so that this will apply to everybody who plays him. And then I'll go through the specific Legion ones so that if you happen to be playing that Legion, then you'll know that you can wield him differently. So the first one is called Gorget of Hate. Now this basically gives you plus one to your saving throws, which is really, really good on something with a two up save and Armor of Contempt. This basically means that you're getting plus two to your saving throw against anything with AP which means that something with AP2, your Armor of Contempt makes it AP1, which would mean you'd be getting a 3-up save, but you're getting plus 1 to your saving throws from Gorget of Hate, so you're going back to a 2-up. 
It essentially means that your armor save will be the equivalent of the AP on the weapon that's targeting you. So if you're getting targeted with an AP3, you've got a three up save. If you're getting targeted with AP4, you've got a four up save. In addition to that, it gives the bearer a four plus invulnerable save. Now, the Disco Lord already has a five plus invulnerable save from his demon engine, but that making that a four plus just means that if somebody does go in and hit you with those AP5 really strong units, then you're going to be shrugging half that damage. So the four up is very valuable. The plus one to save is very valuable. And then there's one more part to this, which is really interesting. Basically with this is the first time the bearer is destroyed before removing it from play, roll a D6. And for each enemy unit within three inches of the bearer on a two to five, they suffer D3 model wounds. And on a six, they suffer three model wounds. So basically this means that, in a, particularly in a vehicle matchup, but really in any matchup, this Lord Discordant has the ability to shit out a whole ton of mortal wounds. So he can go in and he can corrupt vehicles for doing up to six mortal wounds to two vehicles. Then if he dies, he can then do an aura, a six inch aura of, a three inch aura, sorry, of multiple units taking mortal wounds on death. So that's really powerful as well. But the main things about this relic that we want it for are the plus one save and the four up invulnerable save. Now there is one other generic relic that's worth considering here. It's called the Black Rune of Damnation. And basically you give this to a unit and it gives that whole unit neg one to be wounded. Now this is really powerful on the Lord Discordant because he's already got the two up armor save. So the other relic that gives you plus one to saving throws is not always gonna take effect. Whereas this will, because something that's wounding you on fours is gonna be wounding you on five. Something that's wounding you on twos is gonna be wounding you on threes. Like, it's always going to have an effect. And also with his toughness of six, it's a really interesting break point because it means that all the strength four and five weapons, which are very, very common, are going to be wounding you on sixes. So it's really, really powerful in that regard. However, I think the Black Rune of Damnation is better given to a sergeant in a unit because it confers that ability to the entire unit. So if you take a unit of Terminators and you put the Black Rune on the sergeant, that whole unit of Terminators is getting neg one to wound, and then you can wrap that unit around your characters, and now your characters are untargetable, and the one unit that is targetable is neg one to wound. So personally, I prefer saving this relic for a unit and putting the Gorget of Hate on the Disco Lord so that he gets the plus one save, so that he's tough, so that by the end of the game, once your opponent has finally whittled down that tough unit that's surrounding him, well, now they've got to deal with him and he's hard to kill as well, which just means that if your opponent does pick Assassinate, the chances of them getting that Disco Lord is very low. The other thing worth noting with this relic is, of course, that it gives you an 8-inch aura of any doubles for an enemy Psyker are perils. So this is actually really good into, obviously, your Grey Knights, your Thousand Suns, your Eldar matchups, your other Chaos matchups, because there's going to be lots of Psykers around, you know. So it's it has got a lot of utility in that way as well. However, like I said, if you put that on the sergeant of a unit that's protecting them, well, that eight inch or 18 inch aura is gonna project from that sergeant. So I still think this unit, this relic is better for a unit. However, it is very, very good on the Disco Lord himself. So you'll have to make that decision for yourself. All right, now that we've decided what relic we're gonna give him, we need to talk about Warlord traits. Now there's only really one generic Warlord trait that's worth giving him, and that gives him a five up feel no pain, so a five up save to shrug off wounds. Now this is really, really powerful. There's a few people out there that have made the argument for the um, halve incoming damage warlord trait. However, I find that with the demon engine, he's able to use a strat to get neg one damage. So against damage one weapons, the five up feel no pain is going to be better because you're only taking a single damage. So halving or neg one damage means nothing. Against damage two, you're gonna be able to spend a CP to halve that, uh, to reduce that by one. So now you're only taking one damage and then you're getting the five up feel no pains against that. So against one damage, the five up feel no pains better. Against two damage, the five up feel no pains get better. Against three damage, again, you can neg one, which is the same as half because you're half rounding up. So you can neg one, which is the same, and then get five up feel no pains on top. Against four damage, which with the half damage becomes two. So it's a 50% reduction, whereas if you've got a half damage of, uh, a neg one damage puts you to three, and then you roll your five ups, on average, you're gonna reduce one of those. So you're gonna end up at the same. Then five damage, you half five to become three. So half damage saves you with two pips of damage. Whereas if you are 
neg one damage, you go to four, and then you get four or five ups. You're gonna save on average one and a bit. So again, saving just over two pips. Against six damage, you're reducing by three, but if you spend a CP to reduce by one, you're now taking five damage, and then you get five goes at reducing the damage. So it's realistically, it's only six damage or higher where this is going to be reliably better. That being said, all of the points that I just made rely on you spending command points to reduce the incoming damage, which obviously you don't want to do. So the, an argument could be made that having the halve incoming damage is going to be better off because you're going to be running out of CP or you might want to spend your CP on other things. That being said, we're going to wield this guy quite defensively, protected by units, so he's not really going to be targeted too often. And when he is targeted, that might be once or twice per game, he gets targeted by something that's actually scary, at which point you just flick on the one, neg one damage and rely on your five ups. So the five up Fern of Pain, in my opinion, is definitely the strongest Warlord trait for this guy, if you're playing him defensively. So you combine your five up Warlord trait and your plus one save and a four up invulnerable save on the Lord Discordant, and that's the loadout we want to take with him. All right, next we want to talk about the Mark of Chaos. Now, you don't have to give him a Mark of Chaos, and they are 15 points, which can be quite a serious investment in this codex because everything in this codex is so fucking expensive, right? That being said, there's some real perlers in here, and a lot, almost all of these Marks of Chaos have great utility on the Lord Discordant. So the first one we're going to talk about is the Mark of Zinch. Once per, game, once per turn, the first failed saving throw for this unit the damage characteristic is reduced to zero. Now this one's really good, obviously, because it allows you to go, cool, I've got a two-up save, I'm gonna pass, 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 and then eventually you fail one, and you're like, cool, that's a damage zero, pass, 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 pass. So it's really powerful. That being said, it is the first failed save. So if your opponent's smart, they can go, cool, I'm just gonna shoot a bunch of bolters and shit into you. Eventually you're gonna fail one, and now you reduce that bolter to one damage, and then I'm gonna hit you with the melter guns, and you can't reduce the melter gun damage to zero because you have to do it on the first failed saving throw. So yeah, Mark of Zinch is really good. And I think in certain situations, it's gonna be really powerful, but it's not my favorite. Mark of Nurgle is an interesting one where it's basically each time an attack is made against this unit that has the strength characteristic equal to, or at least double, you reduce the wound roll by one. This one's really interesting. Basically what it means is that if you're going to be wounding on a four or a two, you reduce the wound roll by one. So if you're gonna be wounding on a three, so see his toughness six, so say your strength seven, nothing happens. And if you're going to be wounding on a five, so say his strength six, so maybe say your strength five, then nothing happens. But if you're going to be wounding on a natural four, so your strength six, or your strength 12 or higher, then it's gonna make him neg one to wound. Now, interestingly, this will not stack with the, um, Black Rune of Damnation. However, if you haven't taken the Black Rune of Damnation, then this becomes really fucking good. Because now, if you've taken the other one, the Gorget of Hate, you've got plus one to your saving throws, you get a four up invulnerable save, and against things that are strength six or 12 or higher, you're getting neg one to be wounded, and a five up feel no pain, that makes this guy fucking tough. So given that we've already discussed my opinion that the Black Rune is better off given to a unit of Terminators or something of that nature, I actually think the Mark of Nurgle is well worth its points. Now you might be thinking, yeah, but how much strength six and how much strength 12 or higher is there? Well, the strength six isn't really the relevant thing. Even though there's a lot of strength six in the top meta armies like Eldar and Tau, that being said, where this really comes into play is those really high damage attacks. You know, when somebody hits you with something that's like strength 14, D3 plus three damage, you know, AP five, and it's like, oh shit, so now it's pushing me to my invulnerable save. And if it gets through, it's gonna take a big chunk out of me. Making them neg one to be wounded is really powerful. All right, the next one is the Mark of Slanesh. So basically this allows you to fight first in the fight phase. Um, which is really powerful. It's also actually quite powerful defensively because it means that if your opponent charges multiple things, those multiple things don't just all die. You know, so that's, it's really powerful. That being said, I don't think it helps enough and I don't think it outclasses the mark of Nurgle. The other thing that this does allow you access to is Delightful Agonies, which is a five up feel no pain. However, we already have access to that through our Warlord trait. So realistically, I don't think this mark is worth the 15 points. If you're going to be spending the 15 points, so far it's the mark of Nurgle.
And last but not least, the Mark of Corn. Now the Mark of Corn basically just gives you plus one strength characteristic every time you charge, which is great and is really powerful on the offensive Lord Discordant build. However, on the defensive side, it's not that valuable. All right, now let's talk about the generic stratagems, the stratagems that all Chaos Legions are gonna have access to that are gonna enhance the durability of this Lord Discordant. The first one off the bat is Infernal Engine. So it only costs one CP on him, and basically you do it in your opponent's shooting phase or fight phase when you're targeted, and you then reduce the damage characteristic of attacks that target that model for the duration of that phase by one. So this is really powerful into two damage, three damage shots. It gets less powerful the higher the damage characteristic gets, but it's still worthwhile because every time you do this, if you're about to get hit by 10 shots, you're potentially removing 10 damage from that pull, which could have killed him. So really powerful strat and it's only one CP, definitely one that you're gonna to wanna to be hitting that spam button on and using this every time he's targeted by something serious. Alrighty, so that covers off the generic stuff. So now let's talk about Legion specific Warlord traits, relics, and stratagems, and what you can do differently if you're running a specific Legion. The first Legion we're gonna talk about is the Word Bearers. Now they have a Warlord trait called Diabolist, and basically what this does is it means your opponent cannot reroll the wound roll when targeting your Lord Discordant, and you get a five up feel no pain to shrug off those wounds. So this is a no brainer. It's the same Warlord trait as the generic one in that you get the five up feel no pain, but it also gives you the ability to deny your opponent those critical rerolls. And if you, if you match this with the Mark of Nurgle, they're really gonna wanna be rerolling because you're often gonna be putting them at neg one to be wounded, um, which just makes this really stupidly powerful. And this one could be an argument for pairing it with the Black Rune, because if you're always there, if you're always forcing them to not reroll against you, and you're always forcing them to be neg one to wound, now he actually gets crazy strong, and he might not necessarily need that unit protecting him. All right, next we have a word bearer's stratagem called the Hexagrammatic Ward. Now basically what this does is that when an attack is allocated to the Lord Discordant, or any word bearer's model for that matter, you can reduce the damage characteristic of that attack to a zero. Now it's worth noting that this is when an attack is allocated to you. So if your opponent declares you as a target, they shoot at you, then you can turn one of those attacks to a zero, which means that if, they hit, if they're shooting at you with something that's three damage and say it's got three shots, you can only make one of those become a damage characteristic of zero and you do it before they roll to hit and wound. Right, so it's not that powerful, but it can be extremely good when like, say you're versing the Silent King and he's shooting you with those six damage pillars. You know, being able to go, cool, that pillar effectively doesn't get to shoot. You can shoot with the other one, but that one can fuck off. That's really powerful for one CP. All right, the next Legion we're gonna talk about is the Iron Warriors. Now, in a similar fashion to the Word Bearers, they have a Warlord trait that is just straight up better than the generic one. This one gives you plus one to your toughness characteristic and a five up feel no pain or a five up ability to shrug off wounds. Now again, this one pairs really, really well with the Black Rune of Damnation because if you put this on there, Iron Warriors already get the Legion trait of can't reroll to wound. Then you're making him toughness seven with Neg one to be wounded. That's really fucking good because that means that even auto cannons and things like that are gonna be wounding him on fives. So this is really good, plus one toughness, five up feel no pain, really, really powerful. They also have an interesting stratagem that's worth discussing called Unholy Vigor. Use this stratagem in any phase when an Iron Warrior's machine, spirit, or demon engine, which the Lord Discordant counts, is selected as a target of attack. Until the end of the phase, each time an attack is made against that unit subtract one from that attack's wound roll. If it's titanic, it costs three CP, otherwise it costs two CP. So now this one is probably the toughest of all Lord Discordants, because basically what you can do is you can take the plus one save, four up invulnerable save relic, the five up Fernando Pain and plus one toughness warlord trait, and then if you want to for two CP, you can also make him neg one to wound, and for a further CP, you can make him neg one damage. So that means that this guy is just not dying. You can throw him out in the open and they can throw their whole army at him and they're probably barely gonna scratch him because he's gonna be tough, he's gonna be negatives to wound, he's gonna be hard to hit, he's gonna be fucking tough as fuck. 
So the, the Iron Warriors so far for me get the cake for best Lord Discordant. And last, but absolutely not least, we have the creations of Bile. They can create a very interesting Disco Lord in themselves. So first of all, their Legion trait for the uh, basically fight on death is really powerful because it means even if they do finally put all that effort in and kill him, well, they're still gonna get hit by him anyway, which is really powerful. That being said, they have a Warlord trait called Twisted Regeneration. Basically what this does is once per battle, when the Warlord is destroyed, you can choose for them to regenerate instead. And basically you roll a two up and if you pass, they get back with D3 wounds remaining. So this is so fucking good because it means that even if they do break all the way through and kill you, you can then choose whether or not you want to fight on death and kill the thing that just killed your Disco Lord. Or if they've got no units left to fight and they've got nothing left to do, you can go cool, roll a dice on a two up, he just gets back up. And then in my turn, I'm gonna charge in and kill you. So, and now I'm still alive running around. So that's really powerful. And if your opponent doesn't sequence it well, like if they kill you at the end of their shooting phase, you just get back up and they got nothing left to shoot you. That's so fucking powerful. So this is definitely a really good Warlord trait. They also have an interesting uh, stratagem, which is basically one CP for Neg 1 to hit called Monstrous Visages. And basically this means that now that Warlord is gonna be, he's gonna be harder to hit, harder to kill. When you do kill him, he can get back up or he can just fight you, really powerful. All right, so now we've covered off the Legion traits, the best Legions for him, the Warlord traits, the Relics. Now let's talk about how to actually wield him in a game. Now the important thing to note here is that he does get Lookout Sir and Character Protection. So what you wanna do is you wanna have some tough units nearby that you can use to protect him so that your opponent can't shoot him. You don't mind if your opponent tries to kill him in combat because that's where he wants to be. He's a really good combat character and he's tough enough that he can tank the charge from most units and still fight. Whereas if you're able, if your opponent's able to get big guns onto him, then that can be a problem. So I've been running him pr with pretty good success with a couple of rhinos just flanking him because as long as he's near that rhino and the rhino is between him and the target, he's pretty safe. And the other option is a big unit of terminators that can protect multiple characters and put the Black Rune of Damnation on them and make them tough as fuck. That's another very good option. And that option synergizes really well with the Iron Warriors because the Iron Warriors have ability to get plus and neg one to damage on those Terminators. And they can also make those Terminators make it so that you can't reroll the wound against them. There's a lot of really defensive power in the Iron Warriors. So they're the two main ways to wield him. And basically what you wanna do is you wanna push up into the center of the table with him protected. And then when you feel like you've taken out the, the big threats, you then break that formation and send your Disco Lord out with his 12 inch move. And he just goes in and charges and cleans up. So yeah, there we have it. Masterclass on the defensive Lord Discordant. These are my top picks for Warlord traits and relics. And also my top picks for which legions are the most powerful. The Iron Warriors, the Creations of Bile, and the Word Bearers are the three best Lord Discordants. And I think of the three of them, it's hard to really pin down which one's my favorite, but I think the Iron Warriors is going to come out on top. That being said, the Creations of Bile and the uh, Word Bearers are slightly more offensive. So if you want a more balanced Lord Discordant, one of those legions might be a better option because the Creations of Bile gives you plus to your movement and plus to your attacks and plus to the fact that when you die, you fight. So you can use him, wield him much more aggressively. And the Word Bearers one gets reroll hits and a few other stratagems that we'll talk about in the offensive video. So all of them are great choices, but yeah, that covers the masterclass for the Lord Discordon defensive. So the next video that I'm gonna be doing is gonna be a similar vein to this where I'm gonna be talking about the offensive output and how to wield him offensively. Alrighty guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed that video. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below, what you think of the Disco Lord, what units you'd like to see masterclasses on. If you want to see me do breakdowns of specific legions, those sorts of things, chuck it in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you don't miss the future masterclasses and keep your eyes peeled for part two of this video, which is going to be the offensive masterclass for the Lord Discord. I'll see you next time. Do your objective markers ever get lost behind terrain or other models and become difficult to see? Do they ever get bumped and accidentally moved during a game? And do they ever spark arguments about distances? Well, not anymore. Introducing 
The blog for the blood god, not even remotely patented, neoprene objective markers. Made from the same material as astronaut suits, or maybe military equipment, or probably neither of those things, this 2mm thick neoprene synthetic rubber is tear resistant, water resistant, and is designed to last. But that's not all, the blog for the blood god, not even remotely patented neoprene objective markers come in a variety of different designs and styles to suit any faction represented in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. These objective markers are a perfect gift for yourself or a friend and are a perfect way to flex and show your opponent that not only are you a smarter, cooler and better 40k player than them, but you also have more disposable income than they do. For the low price of $25, you'll get not one, not two, but six neoprene objective markers, perfectly designed for 9th edition Warhammer 40k. But wait, there's more. For a limited time only, people who sign up on Patreon to support Blog for the Blood God as a Skull Champion tier $5 per month member will gain access to a custom design service where I will design a unique logo to support their gaming club like the one I did to the left here for the Potato Farmers local gaming club here in Melbourne. Follow the links in the description of this video to pick up your set today.